Hi, this is your host, Swapnil Bharti, and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Sean Umara, field CTO at Mirantis. Sean, it's nice to have you on the show. Thanks for having me here. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, so tell me, what are you announcing? It's Mirantis OpenStack for Kubernetes or Mocha, or however you call it. So tell me, what is it? We've had some fun and games internally. We're calling up MOS or Mirantis OpenStack for Kubernetes. Um, we're going to go back to the old MOS acronym. Um, and it's our new way of looking at OpenStack for the future. I mean, if you look at Mirantis, the company evolved as a pure OpenStack company uh, in, the, in those early days. Uh, and now you guys are also strong in Kubernetes. So first of all, tell me, what is the need of this at this point? So the reason we've gone down this road is, you know, is we've, we've entered into this Kubernetes journey and this container journey for the future. Um, and we're seeing a lot of customers require OpenStack. Um, they need virtual machines alongside their um, container environments. So Marantis has a strong customer base who are focused on, on OpenStack. Um, and as part of our future, we've decided to put OpenStack on top of Kubernetes so that we can leverage Kubernetes and leverage the power of Kubernetes to handle that infrastructure layer. Right. I, I will talk about you know what market you're trying to address with this, but before that, I also want to understand what are the core component of MOSC or MOSC? So MOSC, uh, its core components are our Mirantis Container Cloud product, which handles the deployment and management of our Kubernetes clusters in the multi-cloud environment. So it, it is the basis that we built the entire product on top of. Um, MCC, Marantis Container Cloud, builds and deploys the Kubernetes clusters. We then deliver OpenStack on top of that um, as a set of Kubernetes services. So we've containerized all of the OpenStack services, um, all of the agents, all of the networking components, and we deliver them as Kubernetes application, cloud native application on top of these Kubernetes clusters. Sorry, along, along with that, we're also delivering our Ceph storage management products and our visibility tool set, which is Stacklight. So are we kind of looking at, you know, fully managed open stack with Kubernetes kind of solution? Absolutely. So we're bringing both of them to the party at the same time. Through the Mirantis Container Cloud, we have this fully managed, fully lifecycle managed Kubernetes cluster, which handles that underlying layer. On top of that, we're putting all the OpenStack components to give you that full virtual machine layer. So you can now have both together in the same environment, managed together um, with the full day two and lifecycle management, of the operations component, so that it's very quick and simple and easy to deploy a new OpenStack cluster or a new Kubernetes cluster or on top of each other, um, allowing for the future of a joint virtual machine environment or Kubernetes environment as you need it. What are the use cases uh, you're targeting with this one? Because first of all, <laughs> uh, everybody wants to run Kubernetes everywhere, even in the toasters. Someday we'll have jokes about like Linux running. Well, that's a good use case, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so out of the box, the initial use case is the traditional enterprise IT environment that today is focused heavily on, say, the VMware market, where I have a large legacy set of applications or I have applications that are just not suited at this stage for going into containers. As we move forward, we'll be focusing heavily on telco workloads. You know, the telco market and the edge market are, are very big workload and they have a number of deep technical requirements that Kubernetes is not yet ready to service, although it will be coming in the future. So we're hoping to bridge that gap as well. It's also a great use case for customers that have a lot of in traditional internal infrastructure, but want to be able to slice that up um, and do software defined data center work utilizing um, OpenStack, allowing you to better define and manage your data centers, better utilize those infrastructure resources that you have. And if, when you mentioned telcos, Mirantis already have a very good story, uh, OpenStack story with, with telcos, you know, because telcos, they are building a the stack on top of OpenStack and all those open source technologies. Then 5G is also coming in. Uh, so uh, is this the kind of, you know, evolution of the same market? Uh, we're, you know, it is an evolution of the same market. Um, we believe there's also a lot of new market in the 5G and edge space. Um, 5G and edge is no longer just a telco um, use case. We're starting to see that coming in uh, manufacturing, uh, financial services, um, a lot of private 5G networking um, and small business 5G networking, where 
they're leveraging the power and the networking capabilities of 5G to deliver IoT type services. Um, and you know the, the bandwidth primarily and the guaranteed throughput, which um, man, especially in the manufacturing industry, the motor vehicle industry, um, automated cars, um, you know, just the list can go on and on of all these possibilities. Um, we believe we have a specific niche that we can fit in there, which is providing for that infrastructure on the edge um, and that infrastructure in the data center, managing that and making it easy and simple to access. And I think earlier this year, uh, the government also released some of uh, the 5G you know, spectrum as well. They, they're kind of democratizing 5G and also it making it not only accessible, but also affordable. So that will also... Uh, uh, yeah. play a big Com role here and also access to 5g is really going to make it be a big game changer um, especially for access in where traditional access methodologies just don't don't work very well so right right forward to that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, i know you may or may not be able to name some customers but can you tell you know who is either already leveraging it or you are le looking at them uh, leveraging mosk so I can't name customers directly, but I can say that we've done a number of large scale betas with a couple of customers here in Europe. So we've had a number of service providers here in Europe who have already been using our products, who have done um, betas and are busy deploying the new GA products. Um, we've also just completed quite, ha quite literally today, a design session with a large customer here in Europe um, who is focused on building a a large scale internal cluster using MOS over the next couple of months. Um, and one customer we spoke to today, their feedback was the GA is just awesome. So that was great feedback from a customer today. Um, in the US, we're talking to a couple of small telco customers who are leveraging it and want to see how we can take this into the edge space. I also want to talk about OpenStack a bit. Has OpenStack story, OpenStack, you know, saw a hype like every other technology, you know, and then it matured and, you know, has the OpenStack story changed? Because now we are talking about, um, especially after all these public cloud outages, you know, people do want to control their data. You know, data is critical. You know, data gravity is going on there where, you know, hyperscalers, they are trying to grab it. So uh, companies might reconsider going back to on-prem or it's not going to be, it will be a multi-cloud hybrid cloud story. So will the role of OpenStack change, number one? Number two is that by you bringing these two together, are you trying to help that uh, movement as well? Yes, so I mean, OpenStack is already seeing a lot of change coming. You know, it went through the slump. People were saying things like OpenStack is dead. It's definitely not. We're, we've actually seen a large uptick in customers asking about OpenStack, asking about how do they develop private clouds. Um, as an example, the latest CNCF report, I mean, this is, is interesting to me, has seen an increase in people moving back on-prem. So... You know, Kubernetes on its own doesn't manage that infrastructure problem. You still need to manage that underlying infrastructure challenge. And that really is where I see OpenStack becoming the point of future of the open source way of delivering infrastructure and providing for that software defined data center. Once we've done that, we can see the maturity. You know, OpenStack foundations become Open Infra Foundation. Um, a lot of change happening there. Um, a lot of products are maturing. A lot of the components of OpenStack have matured considerably to the point where they almost seem static. But that's just because they've reached that point where they're very easy to use and, and very stable. Right. Uh, yeah, that's why, you know, um, <laughs> of course, uh, I mean, I am part of press as well, but kind of people look for the next shiny object. Uh, that's why when the Kubernetes people are trying to, is struggling to say that, hey, Kubernetes is boring. We don't want all the unnecessary hype, you know, just because once technology become boring, it means it's stable. People are using it, you know, there's nothing, you know. Uh, can you talk about uh, how you are going to offer MOS to your user? What is the pricing look like? Is it, in, I mean, you did mention it is integrated with a lot of other Miranda's offering, but talk about that. How people can test it, try it, use it. So for testing and trying it, um, very simple. We offer it um, as a freemium downloading, downloadable option. So along with our MCC, you can, you can go to our website. Um, you'll be able to sign up to download it. You'll deploy our MCC product um, as the starting point. And then you'll be able to deliver it in your own environment. Um, right now, it requires 
um, hardware infrastructure. Moving forward, we will be offering a service that will allow you to do that in a virtual infrastructure so you can just try it out. From a pricing model perspective, uh, we're focusing on node-based pricing for today. Um, and we, we plan to deliver uh, pricing in the future that'll be um, on-demand based pricing. We're also talking to a number of partners to be able to offer this, the whole service as a deliverable option uh, and offering for you. It's, it's too early for that and you know, but uh, what kind of roadmap do you have for the project? You know, what is the next step you're looking, hey, we have to solve this problem. Can you talk about that? So, you know, right now, as I said, we started on that enterprise use case. We started by focusing on what the enterprise needs. Um, as our very next step, we will be delivering early in the new year a number of features aimed specifically at the telco market, at the NFV market. Um, from there, we'll, we will evolve to start taking into account more of the edge market. Um, right now, we can offer for the edge market, but we really want to take it to the next layer with edge where we can start to do uh, more interesting deployment models where we can have single compute nodes at remote locations. We can start to leverage very, very small, or very specific footprints, potentially alternate hardware types. So bringing in ARM um, chipsets as an example, so that we can do very lightweight deployments to support the IoT market. Um, you know, our future of OpenStack for us will, will, will leverage that side of the market, leverage where the telco market is going and leverage reducing the footprint um, and increasing the performance criteria at the same time delivering Kubernetes alongside that as we move through this. Sean, thank you so much for talking with Mosk today and also uh, talk about uh, what we should be looking forward to, especially open stack space. Uh, you're right, at one point people are saying it's dead, but no, that's not true. There is still, uh, Unix is still playing a big role. Mainframe is playing big role. So open stack is also one of those technologies. Like Linux kernel, we don't talk about it, but it is playing a very critical role somewhere yeah, down there. Yeah. Yeah, so, so once again, thank you, and I look forward to talking to you again. Likewise, thank you very much.